Electromagnetic Waves. The final topic of the course is light and matter, and in this video we'll be covering electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are a form of radiant energy, and they have an electric component and a magnetic component, with these being electric and magnetic fields. Now these electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other and they oscillate, meaning they change in magnitude and direction. The oscillation of these fields is also at right angles to the direction of travel. When you've got the waves that oscillate in a direction that's perpendicular to the travel, these are called transverse waves. Now the electric field propagates and creates a magnetic field and the magnetic field creates an electric field, so these propagate each other and the radiation just keeps going. As a definition, plane of polarization of an electromagnetic field is the plane of the electric field. So in this diagram on the screen, the plane will be the plane of the page or the plane of the screen looking at the red electric field. Now there's a lot of definitions on this page, but a lot of them you already know. The wavelength of an electromagnetic wave is the distance between two adjacent crests or troughs and with a crest in the diagrams being the maximum amplitude and the trough being the minimum. And when you've got this cyclic periodic pattern, it's easy to find the crests and the troughs. It's important to be careful when you look at diagrams for waves and notice what the axes are telling you. So in this top one here, the horizontal axis is distance, whereas on the bottom one, the horizontal axis is time. So if you measured the point from here to here, because it's a distance axis, that would make it the wavelength. However, if you looked at the time axes, if you measured from here to here, that's not distance anymore, that's time. So that would be the period of the wave. The frequency of a wave is the number of waves that pass a certain point every second. And that's linked to the period of the wave, which is the time it takes to complete one oscillation. And these are reciprocals of each other given by these two formulas here. The speed of a wave is how fast it travels and in a vacuum when we're talking about electromagnetic waves that's the speed of light given by 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second however in water and other mediums this speed can be different now electromagnetic waves come in different categories so we've got visible light which we know x-rays infrared light all of these have different energies but they do travel at the same speed now I'd like to have a look at an animation here just to see what's going on so first of all, let's focus on the red arrow. And we can see it uh, going up and down, representing the magnitude of the electric field. Okay, you can see this is right angles to the blue magnetic field and right angles to the direction of travel. Now looking at the blue arrow, this represents the amplitude of the magnetic field, which is propagated by the electric field. And the other component that we've got is the wavelength, which is not changing. Electric and magnetic fields are defined in terms of their wavelength or their frequency. And because wavelength being length uh, can be a continuous value, meaning you can always have another decimal point, it's considered a spectrum. There's no discrete minimum value. Now the spectrum is divided into categories that are named at the top here. So there's seven categories and in order from longest wavelength to shortest wavelength, they go radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light. And notice that the visible light that our eyes pick up is only just a narrow part of the spectrum. And then as we have the wavelength going shorter, ultraviolet, x-ray and gamma ray. Now with that shorter wavelength as well, we have more energy in those waves. And with that more energy, obviously more dangerous to our bodies. In order to remember the order of the spectrum, one trick that I've got is to remember Roy G. Biv being the colors of the rainbow. So that's in order, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And when a white light is split, it's split into those colors in that order. Because visible light is in the middle of the spectrum, the way we've categorized it, red is, for example, on the long end, and lower than that is infrared. Then with uh, the higher end, being the shorter wavelength, we've got the indigo or the violet. And shorter than that, you've got ultraviolet. So you can remember which way the red and the violet are in the visible spectrum compared to the rest. Radio and TV waves can be transmitted by an antenna. Um, be careful with the use of antenna and aerial. Uh, we use antenna in physics because it both transmits and receives. In the antenna, 
electrons will oscillate in the direction of the antenna because that's the direction they're limited to. This produces an electric field that propagates at the speed of light and that electric field oscillates in the direction of the antenna meaning that's the plane of polarization. So this is just another diagram that's showing the oscillation. The red represents this electric field that's the plane of polarization and it's propagated at the speed of light. To make it a radio wave the wavelengths have to be pretty long and sometimes these radio waves could be a kilometer long. However when propagating at the speed of light oscillation of that particle in the antenna that creates that electric field will oscillate at around about the megahertz region which is like the frequency range of our radio stations. When we want to receive a radio signal our antenna that we've got for our device has to be in that same orientation. So if the signal was transmitted with the planar polarization being vertical, then our antenna to receive it also has to be vertical. Now with this information, there could be a situation where you've got a town that's close to the country and close to the city, and it receives two signals of radio stations or TV stations. Now there could be a lot of interference because they transmit on the same frequency, if the country signal was transmitted in a vertical plane and the city on a horizontal, because of the polarization, you can minimize a lot of the interference. Now finally, there's a relationship between the speed, the wavelength and the frequency of a wave being given by the equation on the screen, V equals F lambda. So F is the frequency measured in Hertz, which is the number of times that wave passes a point every second. And lambda is the wavelength measured in meters. Again, with electromagnetic radiation, V is the speed of light. However, it could be different in different mediums. And sometimes in our problems, we're not given the specific frequency, but we're given the period of oscillation. And that can lead to finding the frequency with the formula F equals one over T. Name all seven categories of the electromagnetic spectrum from the largest wavelength to the shortest. <laughs>